Now, if you do A-level maths, you will not like what I've done here. 10 divided by 3 is equal to 3. But in purely physics terms, this is completely correct. And it's all to do with the way that we use significant figures in both our raw data and then our answer. And to really demonstrate this, I'd like to use uh, just a question from the Isaac Physics book. I'm not going to do all the questions and, and all the answers, which I know is what a lot of people would like me to do. But I'm just going to pick one question. And this one is F2.5. And it's about Charlie driving her... Uh, 20,000 kilogram bus, stops at around about, uh, Percy's driving his 750 kilogram course at 15 meters per second, they have an impact, uh, and then the, the two things move off together. So how fast will a smashed up wreck be moved traveling after collision? So a very simple question, I'd just like to demonstrate how we actually should use significant figures. So to answer this question, I'm gonna start with a diagram. First of all, I'm gonna do just a big circle to be the bus, and the bus has a mass of 20,000 kilograms. And I'm going to call this uh, basic object number one. And U1, its initial velocity is equal to zero because it's stationary. Um, just before this, the, the car, I'm going to do a smaller arrow to show that that's got less mass, and that's 750. And this is travelling along at U2, because I'm going to call this one object two. And it says they're travelling at 15 metres per second. OK, so I've basically drawn the diagram and after the collision, the two things move off together. So I've got like a sort of sideways snowman. Uh, their combined mass is going to be 20,000 plus 750. And what we want to know is their combined velocity afterwards. So this is the diagram of what we've got in the question. So provided no external forces act on the system, what we can say is that momentum before is equal to the momentum afterwards. So we're going to uh, say that momentum is conserved. The momentum before is equal to this momentum, which is equal to m1u1. We're going to add it to this momentum, which is m2u2. And that's going to be equal to their final momentum, which is equal to m1 plus m2 multiplied by v. OK, that's their combined velocity. So we're going to put the numbers in. Well, first of all, u1 is 0. So basically, this thing here turns to 0. The total momentum before then is going to be equal to uh, m2, which is 750, multiplied by 15. That's going to be then equal to their combined mass, which is 20,750, multiplied by their final velocity. If I rearrange this, I can say then that v is equal to 750 times 15 over 20,750 to give my final velocity equal to this. And the number I've just worked out on my calculator is equal to 0 0.54 two one six eight seven four so that's what it says on my calculator but what should or how should i display my final answer well this depends upon the significant figures i want to give it in and also what we got in the in the question now first of all this mass here has been given to five significant figures why is that well because we have trailing zeros if it had been given in standard form you might actually know if it's exactly twenty thousand but effectively, what we're saying is it's the nearest plus or minus half a kilogram. It's 20,000 kilograms. So that's five significant figures. This data here, again, we have a trailing zero. So really, that's, strictly speaking, three significant figures. But my speed up here, 15 metres per second, has been given to two significant figures. Now, the way that we deal with this in physics is that we can only justifiably give our final answer to the least amount of significant figures in our raw data. So though that's to 5 and that's to 3, we can only sort of justifiably say, that because everything's basically limited by this, we can only give our final answer to two significant figures. So I've written down everything in my calculator, and that's an important step. You should write down your full calculated value. So I'm just going to say that this one here is my uh, calculated value. And sometimes if you've got a subsequent calculation, this is what you can use. So maybe store it in the memory of your calculator or just go, go over the top and write everything down. But we can only justifiably give our final answer to two significant figures. So in this case, the final speed is equal, the final velocity is equal to 0 0.54 metres per second. I'm going to underline that to show that anybody looking at this, that, that is my answer. I've got my units there. Uh, and this is basically the way that you should be answering questions. So when you're doing Isaac Physics, and I know that uh, a lot of you are doing this now, you have to put the, the answer to the appropriate amount of significant figures. But it makes sense to do this in every, sing every single time you get to question, every time you do an exam. If you give your answer to an appropriate number of significant figures, it makes you look like you know what you're doing. And if you do that, you're going to feel the part and you're just going to get on a lot better in any kind of test that you do. So that's how to deal with significant figures in both your raw data and then your final answer. Thank you.